Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Alright, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick tour of our little farm stand here um, on our homestead and show you a little bit of what we have. Uh, we'll go over to the garden and um, that's all day. <laughs> you guys who live on East Mountain, you know the noise. Anyway, I'll bring you guys around in here and then I'll take you over to the garden and show you what we have growing. Uh, right now. So we are organic, so our vegetables are completely chemical free. I don't use anything on them at all. I plant the seeds and they grow. <laughs> and that's it. Haven't had to water much because as you guys know, we've had a whole lot of rain lately. Uh, Alright, so anyway, let's start here uh, on this side. So we've got a wreath here that's still available. Um, this is our freezer. I am going to put a sign on this because I think a lot of people actually miss this. This is where our chicken is, uh, pork um, cuts, and any frozen vegetables, things that we've packaged and, and put in here. I can show you real quick a little, see, it's pretty full. Um, we have our chicken stock is in here in mason jars, but this is from today's butcher uh, this morning. We had a processing class uh, for our chicken, and it went really well. But this is from today's. So these are the drumsticks. We've got chicken wings. We have all kinds of stuff in here. There's breasts and all kinds of things in here uh, from the processing. There's also whole chickens. And again, the pork cuts are in here. Over here, I have, I made these. Uh, they sold out actually the first day I made them. So I did make more. And these are the simmering potpourris. I dry the different um, fruits. So there's orange, lemon, and apple in here, there's some uh, bay leaf, I have cloves and cinnamon sticks. Um, I am going to be altering that a little here and there for the season, so there will end up being like cranberries and things like that in there. Uh, actually, let me show you up top here. Here is vegetables. So this is broccoli, um, peas, and these are some old cookbooks. This is kale, uh, some onions. We have Swiss chard. I mean, there's just stuff up here, and that's usually, if I have stuff that's bagged, that's where I put it, because it's easier to stick it in these little containers up here, these these little uh, baskets and things, um, than to just flop it down on a counter. So right here, these are all the soaps. I've been working hard on getting soaps done, um, and I, I really like them. <laughs> we use them ourselves. That's how much I like them. Uh, but there's all kinds of different kinds here. I'm trying to remember how many I have total. I think it's like 13 or 14 different scents now. One of my favorites is the Warm and Woodsy. Oh, it smells so good. Anyway, there's, there's vanilla coffee and oatmeal and lavender, and there's all kinds of ones in here. Um, and then these right here are, they're just little... Uh, it's kind of a glare from outside, but they're just you can see the little bumblebee here. These are unscented, but they are still um, These are still goat's milk. All of this is goat's milk um, But these are scented these are excuse me. These are unscented with some honey in it. The rest of these are all goat's milk and I use only 100% pure therapeutic grade essential oils um, That is it. I cannot myself use uh, the synthetic stuff. I can't burn synthetic candles. I can't do any of that. So uh, Yankee Candle, I can't do that anymore. I used to burn them all the time and now it hurts my lungs. So I switched to uh, pure essential oils originally because of my own health. And uh, <clears throat> it just kept going with it. <laughs> all right, here we have the bath salts. Again, only 100% essential oils, therapeutic grade, um, and Epsom salt. I don't have anything, any fillers, there's nothing, none of that mess in there. It's all good stuff. Uh, again, I use those two, so personal experience. 
These right here are my son Aiden's books. Um, Aiden is uh, 12 years old, and he is the author of six books, um, most of them on history. So this is Aiden's homestead. This is the one he wrote a couple years ago. Um, Aiden's home, this is about the history of Westfield. And this is uh, his newest book called The Monster in My Basement. And this is um, not history. This is the very first fiction book that he's written. Uh, he illustrates everything as well. So the first five books are history, based on history, and this one is his first fiction. Um, okay, down here we have a friend of mine, Rhonda, is also a local author. She writes children's books. So we have these here too. She's got different kinds here. They're all, they're all children's books. We have from a very good friend, I've known this boy, well, I don't think he's a boy anymore, but known him for years now. He makes this syrup on his property in Munson, and it's delicious. So I messaged him and asked him if I could get a few bottles, uh, because we are not tapping trees just yet. Um, that is something we're looking into. All right, over here, probably one of the most popular things that we sell here is my homemade cookies. These are uh, peanut butter and chocolate chip cookies. And I make them fresh uh, almost every day. There are some times I don't have them in here, but for the most part, pretty much every day I make them fresh. Um, and uh, they sell out pretty quickly. People tend to like those. Uh, here we have all the candles. So these are all candles that I've made. Soy wax, again, 100% natural, therapeutic grade, uh, essential oils. Nothing bad in here, and all soy wax. So these I love. I burn these in my own house. Um, again, I can't use the uh, the other stuff because it hurts my lungs. It's it's bad. It's not good for you. Um, we also have, of course, what started it all: our eggs. Um, these are from our hens that we have, and uh, these are probably the number one item we have that we sell out of pretty fast. Uh, along with the candles, actually, we have tarts. I forgot to mention that. So we have these little tarts that I made, and these are for, you know, if you don't want to light an actual candle, you can put it in a burner. Um, up here you can see more wreaths. These are what are called deco mesh. Uh, this one is a burlap, so this in here is all burlap. These are all wired ribbons, very good quality wreaths. Um, I've made all of these. I will be making more uh, for the fall. So I actually have one for the fall down here. If you can see that very well, but that's the one I have made for the fall right now. I am making more. I'm making more um, grapevine wreaths. People tend to like those, I think. Uh, and, uh, and lots of other stuff too. Like I'll be making all kinds of stuff. Fall is my season. Fall is, yeah, I love it. <laughs> So I'll be definitely going all out for the fall. There will be candle scents for the fall. There will be soap scents for the fall. There will be everything. Um, I also have these. These are my hand-dipped. Uh, these are beeswax. And they come in two. They are linked by the, whack, by the wick. And they're complete beeswax. That's it. Nothing else. I love them. I think they're so pretty. Down here are all signs that I've made um, on canvas. So these are, they're all on canvas right now. I am gonna be making wood ones, very soon actually. But for now, these are on canvas and you can see. All right, let's finish this. So here we have beets that I've harvested. We've got some zucchini. Uh, we've got some yellow squash. All of these I've harvested today. They just came out of the garden. Um, we've got some potatoes. These have cured. And these are red potatoes right now. And uh, they are really, really good. And I've got a few people that will attest to that. We do have some new, uh, new russet potatoes. These are russets, but they're new. They're little guys. Um, all right, so up here is going to be a little bit different. Um, sorry, my battery's dying. Um, we have all the spices right now. So this is all spices, seasonings that I make. Uh, this one is beef stew. It's measured out correctly uh, for use and everything. Um, there's that chicken dry rub, hamburger, all kinds of stuff. I'm going to be condensing that down into sort of one area, probably like one basket where you can just kind of pick through whatever and try to find what you what you need. 
Uh, the names of the seasonings will be on it, so you'll be able to see what's in it, uh, because I need space. This space right here is going to be utilized for um, probably jar things, that kind of thing, because this is a short distance, not very tall. So that's where that stuff's going to go. We are going to end up putting more shelving down here and on the other side. Uh, but for now, I think we can condense these down and, and use this, better utilize this area. These right here is actually lemon balm. These are dried. Uh, so if anybody wants lemon balm, dried lemon balm is right here. It's great for teas. And here we have, this is apple butter that I made. And we have peach butter. Delicious. Both very delicious, if I didn't say so myself. <laughs> I uh, also have some peach jam that I made. Fresh peaches, local farm. We don't have any fruit trees yet. That hopefully will change soon. Uh, still gonna be a couple of years before we get any fruit. So for now, we just source from local farms. Uh, bread. All right guys, bread. This is a French bread made this morning. I usually always have some sort of bread. So a French bread, Italian bread, uh, um, rolls, any kind of bread I will usually make in the morning and um, have ready for when we open. We have, these are wood sculptures carved uh, with a chainsaw. This is by a good friend of mine. I've known him for years and uh, he does this all with a chainsaw. He's actually teaching me, so I do know how to make some of this. Uh, not quite this. This is a little bear's butt in a log. It's cute. It's like a, you put a plant here or something. I think it would be pretty. Uh, we have a tree. I have one of these in my house, a smaller one that I got years ago. Uh, this is an actual birdhouse. It works and functions as a birdhouse. It's got a clean out on the bottom. They can go in and out. And just a cute little mushroom, a garden mushroom. Again, all handmade with a chainsaw and uh, ready to go. They can go outside. They have, I think it's like five coats of poly on them. So they are all ready to go outside. All right, guys, so this is basically what we have in here right now. There is going to be more coming. We are going to have, I will show you in the garden, there's the amount of tomatoes I planted this year. <laughs> and that's because we want to put them in here for all of you. But also, I make an insane amount of um, uh, tomato sauce, so spaghetti sauce, uh, tomato soups, all that good stuff. I make a lot of that and can it for the winter. So I needed to kind of have enough to do both. And so I think we do because we have tomatoes in like every garden that we have. <laughs> they are everywhere. So I think we'll be all set. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you the garden. So I just wanted to show you guys outside a little bit. This is it. It's Some people call it the little blue shed, which I think is cute. Um, but this is it. This is just a list of some of the things with prices that we have on the door. Um, I have gone ahead and we've planted, this is all vegetables that are planted. It goes all the way around. Um, when I told you we planted tomatoes everywhere, I wasn't kidding. This right here is completely lined with tomatoes. There are a few other things in here, um, but for the most part, that's all tomatoes right now. We will end up utilizing that space more for other things, but as of right now, uh, it's just tomatoes. So now we're headed to the garden. This is the main garden that we just put in uh, the, this year. A lot of you have commented that you drive by and you see it and you think it, it looks really good, which makes me really happy because you never know what people will think when you take an entire side of a yard and transform it into a garden. <laughs> I don't use chemicals on anything. I don't use any weed killer. I don't use any um, fertilizer. I don't use anything on anything. I literally just plant it and let it grow. That is, again, for wanting to eat healthier and feed my family healthy food and uh, provide healthy food for you guys, but also for health reasons for uh, myself and obviously I don't want any health issues for my family. Um, so that's what all of this is. This area over here I kind of planted this in a, I wanted it to sort of be like cottage garden style. So if you look at it, it is very wild. It is just, we got a little bench in the middle. It is just stuff thrown in. And it does have some flowers in here. And uh, a lot of the stuff we grow, flowers, obviously. Um, 
but I wanted it to just kind of look almost like cottage garden so that it's just kind of things everywhere and every time I come in here there's a surprise somewhere that something grew and and I get to harvest it and it's for me it's so much fun to do this over here we have a fountain that actually because of all the rain the uh, piece of board that it was sitting on fell it kind of warped and fell um, so that we got to fix but it is a fountain and I made it out of my old um, actual water pump so it was a real water pump water pump from the 1800s and um, I figured let's do something with it so over here we've got various peppers tomatoes are in here this right here is our peas it's one area of our peas and that's with this for this trellis that's why I put these in so it's growing up this side growing up this side and these are where I harvest the peas when you guys get them that's where they're from uh, these are also tomatoes. So these are Roma tomatoes. Roma tomatoes are really, really good for making spaghetti sauces because they are meaty and they're thick. So they give you a really good thick sauce, which I like. We have down here celery, which is growing. I didn't do a lot of celery this year because I, the celery is very finicky. It, it is uh, picky about its surroundings for growing. So I wanted to kind of put some here and see how it goes this year. And if it, it seems to be going really well, and if it continues, then next year I will know that it's a good spot for it to be. Over here, this trellis right here, and it's going all the way around here, and this one as well, this trellis. These are um, green beans. So they are actually just starting to sprout green beans. Where did I see them? Here we go. These are just starting to sprout some green beans. You can see right here I cannot wait for this to grow so much and all of the green beans to just kind of fall through the trellis I think that's gonna be so beautiful uh, both sides of this is is the same thing you've got lots and lots of flowers which means lots and lots of stuff coming on um, these down here these are little grape tomatoes look how little these plants are but these are all grape tomatoes, so anytime right now, well actually no, there's a garden in the back as well that is uh, uh, giving grape tomatoes too. But for the most part, this is where all the grape tomatoes are. We over here have what will be Brussels sprouts down here. And right here, this, and there's a little bit side shoots still coming out, but this right here is broccoli. That actually is about to get pulled out because I've already harvested uh, pretty much all of it. There's just a couple side shoots on a couple left, but for the most part, that was the broccoli and that is about to get pulled out. Down here in the broccoli, we have a few cabbages. There was some extra room right here, so I decided to um, throw what I had left of the cabbages in there. Cause... And this is an entire bed of cabbages, so you can see over here pretty well these cabbages right here are doing really really well and they, there's actually quite a few in here right here we have cucumbers so this side again this trellis and this side they are growing up and you can see little guys in there already all right so this bed here is kind of a smorgasbord this one this one i've already harvested this had all the beets in it right here the beets are gone now. There's actually what's left is in the isn't in the farm stand. And there's a lot of Swiss chard left here, so I harvest that. Uh, there's a tomato plant. There's two volunteer tomato plants in here. Um, and there's uh, flat leaf kale, regular kale, or curly leaf kale. Uh, and I planted basil and there was spinach in here and all that, and that's all gone now. But So I planted basil and oregano and all kinds of herbs in there. This right here, an entire bed of tomato plants, bet you guessed. Um, there are actually a lot, and I, t I was able to harvest two today, which was pretty amazing. And we have some um, heirlooms in here, so they get like a deep purple color. They're so pretty. Um, beef steak and I think cherry. I'm not 100% sure, but I think cherry. It's one thing when I plant is sometimes I forget what I planted. And... So over here, in this bed, what I was talking about is sort of the cottage out. That is a sunflower, right there. There's a few of them scattered around. I did plant them all the way down, but it looks like this is the side they kind of decided to sprout with. 
Um, we have some flowers in here and plants, and we have our green beans going up there. Um, we have more squash in here, yellow squash, zucchini, uh, cabbages. We have uh, tomatoes. Of course, tomatoes run the entire length of it. We have more uh, peas in here. I think there might be some green beans. I'm not sure. And, I mean, there's just, like, tons of food in here. Tons of food in here. And then, even on the outside, I wanted it to look like a cabbage, uh, a cottage look. Uh, but I used vegetables for that. I used veggies. I didn't... There's a few flowers, and that's for bees, so that the bees are attracted. There's a couple right there. Um, but all the way around here, the entire perimeter of this fence is vegetables and a few flowers and some herbs. So there you have it guys. That is our little farm stand on our homestead. So I hope you enjoyed the tour and we hope you guys come and see us soon. Have a great day.